Welcome to Washington Street United Methodist Church, a church with heart in the heart of the city of Columbia, South Carolina. I do welcome you in the name of Christ to this virtual gathering for worship. I hope that you will find this time of worship a time when you can draw near to God and that even though we are not together, that you may feel connected to your Washington Street family. I do hope that if you are a guest watching us today, that you will contact one of the staff and make us aware of your presence and of any needs that you might have. We are continuing to welcome persons into our sanctuary for in-person worship on Sundays at 11 o'clock. We are so grateful for the opportunity we have to come back together. We do ask that you pre-register online to attend the Sunday services. Also, the outdoor services will be scheduled for May 16th, and we will soon have that registration link up for you as well. We do want you to take advantage of all the ways in which we are trying to reach you and connect you in the name of the living, risen Christ. We are continuing to have Sunday school online, but on May the 16th, our children's classes will resume and some of our adult classes will begin hybrid models and in-person models on our campus. So please check with your Sunday school class leaders as to how they will be offering Sunday school beginning on May the 16th. Today is Mother's Day and we are truly hoping that you will celebrate with joy the gift of motherhood and those who have been like a mother to you and with you in life's journey. We also want to wish a very special word of congratulations to Reverend Austin Lippert, who this week graduated from Lutheran Theological Seminary. We congratulate her on a job well done, and we are thankful for her service among us. I also have one or two upcoming mission events to report to you. Please remember that we will be having a drive and drop on May 13th from 11 to 3, and on May 15th from 9 to 12. Active Faith and the Girl Scout Troop here at Washington Street are sponsoring this drive and drop for babies, and these will be, goods will be donated to the Nazareth Baptist Church just down the street from us. This gives us an opportunity to support their ongoing outreach to families, especially families with young children in crisis. Also on Sunday, May the 23rd, we will have our next Sunday dinner on the grounds. We will again be giving COVID-19 vaccines, first and second doses. So please let folks know that if they need a vaccine, this is open for anyone in our community. And if you're hungry, please join us so that you can have a great treat of delicious food provided by a food truck at our next Sunday dinner. Again, I am truly thankful that you have joined us this morning and together we worship the Lord.
please join me now in today's opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, source of life and source of love, we pray that you would gather us by your spirit as one body in Christ Jesus. Grant us malleable minds so that our thinking is shaped by your commandments. Grant us open hearts so that we are prepared to love one another as you have loved us. Grant us the power of your Holy Spirit so that we might live like Jesus and in him and through him abide in your love now and forever. Amen. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. Hear now the word of the Lord. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Thus ends this reading of God's holy word. Our gospel lesson for today comes from the 15th chapter of John, and we're reading verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. 
You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's an old saying, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. I know it sounds like an odd way to launch a Mother's Day sermon, but wow, that is precisely what Peter was learning and teaching as he gazed around that Gentile household where the Holy Spirit had descended upon a Roman centurion and his family. Peter asked, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? Peter was learning and he was teaching that in the family of God, the Holy Spirit chooses our siblings for us. Perhaps he might even have been remembering the words of Jesus, you did not choose me, I chose you. Peter and the Jewish Christians who accompanied him to Joppa in the, lived in the context of a world that was divided between Gentiles and Jews, them and us, people who were within the covenant and people who were outside the covenant. As we read through Luke's Acts of the Apostles, we watch as the Holy Spirit begins to push against those boundaries in people like an Ethiopian eunuch, in widows who were Gentiles seeking help from the Jewish deacons, in the conversion of Saul, who was a persecutor of the church. And here in this story, of the conversion of Cornelius. You cannot choose your biological family, nor can you choose your spiritual family. That family we learn with the disciples is chosen by God. And this family has nothing to do with genetics. The foundation of this family is love, love for God, love for your neighbor, and love for one another. Love is the theme that is woven through these texts in the early weeks after Easter. Jesus defined love by laying down his life for us. So we too should lay down our lives in love for God, for our neighbor, and in love for one another. Every action of God is motivated by love, so every action and every decision that we make should also be motivated by love. Today we are learning that love is the foundation for the Christian community that is chosen by God and includes all, all who profess faith in the risen living Christ. Family, love, inclusion. Are you remembering the words of Martin Luther King Jr.? In 1963, he said, it is appalling that the most segregated hour of Christian America is 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. As recently as 2016, Pew Research indicated that eight in 10 Americans attend services where a single racial or ethnic group 
comprises at least 80% of the congregation. God chooses our family, but our congregations quite often look like they did in 1958. Very homogenous. We humans like sameness. It is comfortable to be with people who look like us, who have had life experiences like our own, who speak the same language, who dress in similar ways, who enjoy the same kinds of music. We like sameness. And if you watch people at church fellowship gatherings or if you even observe at our South Carolina annual conference where we talk about diversity quite often, you will discover that we really do like sameness. And one of the congregations that I served, there were a number of people who joined the church there after they had retired. And it didn't take long for me and for our evangelism team to begin to realize that we had little opportunity for the long established members of that congregation to get to know these newcomers, except on Sunday morning or through United Methodist Men, which also met on Sunday morning, United Methodist Women and United Methodist Youth. So we dreamed a dream and we began a Wednesday night program where we offered a fellowship meal at no cost to members and new friends. And then we had small groups that met after, afterwards. But it didn't take me very long to realize that while this was a great breath of fresh air in the middle of the week, it really wasn't meeting its purpose. What I began to observe was that choir members would come and pick up their food and take it home and eat at home with their family rather than having the entire family come and participate in the meal and the activities for the evening. What I observed was that multiple generation families would cluster together so that grandmother and grandfather and daughter and son-in-law and grandchildren would all sit at the same table together. I observed that neighbors would sit next to neighbors. Sunday school class members would sit next to Sunday school class members. And quite often, I was the only representative from the church sitting with the new members and the guests. We like sameness. A congregation, though, doesn't have to be blatantly racist or parochial to be 80% of one race or ethnicity or of a predominant socioeconomic background or of one particular culture or another. We just like sameness. It's an anthropological reality. That is why Jesus commanded his disciples to love one another as I have loved you. Such love is not a natural, comfortable, easy thing in the Christian context. This community, this family of God, spans across generations to every point on the globe. This family of God takes us and unites us with people who are very far from the sameness of our everyday lives. Love that lays down its life for the other challenges us to go where other people may not be willing to venture. Like the Apostle Philip, who entered into a deep theological conversation with an Ethiopian eunuch. He literally got into the chariot with a stranger, with a man that his religion and his culture 
devalued. And then, with the boldness of faith, Philip took him into the waters where he baptized him in the name of Jesus the Christ. The commandment to love challenges us to push against those common boundaries that are a part of our everyday life. Some that we have participated in willingly and knowingly and others that are just culturally acceptable. Like Peter, who was sent by a vision and by the Holy Spirit into the home of a Gentile a soldier who wore the uniform of the army that killed Jesus. Love that lays down its life for the other challenges us to go beyond our comfort with sameness. After the October 15 floods that swept across South Carolina, one of the predominantly black congregations in the Charleston district was condemned. It was a huge blow to that congregation, but it gave two of our congregations an opportunity to make a great witness. For over five years, that congregation met in the facilities of a neighboring, predominantly white congregation. Their pastor's office was relocated there. They met every Sunday in the sanctuary. They had their fellowship times on that church property. They had Sunday school there. They had their choir rehearsals there. Were there challenges? Yes. But motivated by love, they worked on those challenges and together they chose that they would act in love with one another. They learned that love truly does break down all barriers. The world today is no less divided than it was in the first century of the Christian era or even in 1963. Birds of a feather flock together. It's true. We like sameness. And Jessup has prepared a program that she will be offering for the whole congregation in the next months. But it's a program about hidden bias. I've participated in it on two different occasions. As we work through the program, we were all embarrassed to discover that most of our friends look like us. Many of our friends are in the same age range. Almost all of our friends practice the same religion. Often they share in the same sexual orientation and marital status. Just like those first century Christians, we function in what can sometimes be polarizing sameness that can become sinful. The sin of exclusion or oppression. Not because of malice, because it's just easier to live with the sameness. That is not how Jesus lived. Jesus commands us to love beyond what is easy and to practice love as he loved us. He told his disciples that this love is the pathway to his joy. We follow that path every time we choose love. And my friends, we can only follow that path with faith. Faith to believe that despite our differences, even significant ones, the power of Christ's love 
will unite us. Faith to believe that even when my neighbor or my fellow church member disagrees with me, that in faith we can build bridges of love with one another. Faith to believe as Paul believed. Love bears all things, love believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Such faith, the writer of 1 John wrote, is the victory that conquers the world. Our faith is the victory that conquers the world. That is the faith that transformed a small band of men and women who witnessed the resurrection into a community of believers who even today are transforming the world. You're one of them. Every time you choose to love one another as Christ has loved you, every time you choose to love your neighbor, you are sharing in God's mission of transformative love. Our text today invites us to love one another as Christ has loved us and to listen for the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Where is the Spirit sending you for the sake of love? Will you interpret the scriptures for a stranger like Philip with that Ethiopian eunuch? Will you be sent into an unexpected destination, an awkward environment where you are asked to share your faith in Jesus Christ? Is the Holy Spirit nudging you to move beyond your comfort zone, to extend the hospitality of Christ to someone who doesn't look like you or someone who doesn't speak like you. You will never know until, like Peter, you listen and obey the commandment of the Lord to love one another as He has loved you. Until in faith you push beyond the comfort of sameness to the joy of the communion and fellowship of the family of God. Let us pray. Holy and blessed God, you truly have called us to be a part of a family that is diverse and beautiful, a family that enables us to learn to love as well as to bear witness to love. We pray that you would indeed shape us so that as we love you, as we love our neighbor, and as we love one another, the world will see you living within us and among us. We pray, O oh God, that wherever you send us, we will surely go and bear witness to that love that is beyond our comprehension, the love of Jesus Christ. And now, we ask you, Lord, to join our hearts in that prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
As I stand here, it is not I who send you into the world. It is the Lord. It is the Christ who called you, the God who chose you, and the Spirit who empowers you to love. So go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit to love and serve God and your neighbor and to love one another in all that you do. Amen and amen.